uh, part of the, uh, the task of survival, or the goal of survival, is to make sure that you can uh, thrive in whatever situation you're in. And uh, you obviously can't do that if you're not prepared. Uh, and if you're going to be prepared, you have to have certain tools as well as certain skills to be able to use those tools to the best of your advantage. Um, so, you know, go through your uh, survival tools and your uh, your knowledge is based and everything else. Uh, try to learn what plants are in your area. Um, I can't obviously go through all of them. There are literally thousands of plants out there. Um, they don't all grow here, obviously, so you're going to have to figure out what's best in the situation that you're going into that you can use for uh, more common food sources as far as the plants go. And also uh, make sure when you go out you have uh, at least some fishing gear with you. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to have you know a whole kit. Um, obviously mine fits inside a little uh, candy tin. Uh, it's pretty complete. It has hooks, has lures, has string, has some leaders in there, and different things you can use to make some bait with. And again, like I said, um, you're much better off using live if you can use it if you're not in a true survival situation. Um, stick with the, the, you know, the artificial lures if you're in a place where uh, you're not supposed to be using them. Uh, Strong's coming in pretty good. I think I'm going to have to bundle up some of my stuff here. I'll be back to you in just a moment. I'm doing this uh, handheld right now, so it might be kind of uh, sketchy as far as uh, quality goes here, but uh, it's coming down pretty good. I'm under some huge trees, which probably isn't the best place to be right now, especially right near water, because uh, there's a thunderstorm. But, uh, yeah, there's not much over, no really any other place I can go, so but uh let's see if we can get you down through the trees to see what's going on. Got a pretty rainbow over there. Gorgeous. Maybe that's a sign that things are going to change. There. One of the uh, little tricks that I've learned over the years is uh, that you can do with the 550 paracord is make some uh, really cheap flashing straps. What you really need are these uh, little toggles. You can pick them up in a package of it's either three or four. I think it's four at uh, Walmart for uh, about maybe four dollars a package or so. But you take your uh, paracord, make it, cut it about twice as long as you need it. Just put a little knot in one end like that. Fold it over. Like so. Put your, through your toggle there. Like so. So, just like that, pull it down to your knot there, and I'm going to move the camera and I'll show you exactly how it works.
or whatever you're going to hook it to, like so. I'll notice that i got the other one already set, ready to go. Pull your toggle through, just like that. Look it up, pull it down. Dollars to it. If you have excess, I usually tie it up so that it's not swinging behind. That way it doesn't uh, catch on to uh, any uh, debris, any branches or anything. Pretty neat trick. Easier clovers. They're uh, more of a field plant. You can find them along the roadsides frequently. Uh, but ideally they grow uh, in large fields. A lot of farmers use them for uh, food for their uh, livestock. And you can, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with the uh, clover. You can dry the flower heads to make a, uh, a nice tea. It's got a lot of helpful ingredients to it. Uh, you can also take the flower heads and the seeds making bread and baking different things. You can also uh, cook the greens uh, and uh, use them raw in uh, salads. It's a pretty abundant wild food. You can always be safe by eating the clovers. There's a lot of different colors. There's uh, crimson, there's white, there's uh, pink clover, some other different clovers. It's a pretty, uh, pretty abundant wild food that you can eat. This one is the uh, common milkweed plant. Also something you find in a lot of waste areas. It's got a lot of uses for it. It's probably one of the best wild foods that you can uh, eat uh, that's out there. You usually find them, like I said, around the, along the roadsides, uh, a lot of uh, fields. You can cook the young shoots um, up to about six inches. Boil them, uh, the young shoots. You want to make sure that you change the water frequently. But the uh, the top leaves, the flower beds, um, and the young seed pods, um, you prepare them the same way. Dip them into boiling water. You can actually cover them uh, in a batter. Dip them in a batter like you would a chicken, uh, and uh, fry them up to make their fritters, which are pretty good. Uh, later on in the summer, they will. Uh, We'll be collecting some of this stuff and uh, going over some recipes and preparedness. But uh, again, you want to make sure that what you have, because uh, that you want to make sure that you don't uh, mix these up with uh, dog banes, which are very close in appearance, or butterfly weed. Both of these are uh, kind of uh, poisonous. So you want to make sure of what you have. And again, you always want to make sure of what you're uh, eating to grab wild foods before you uh, take any chances. So make sure you learn your stuff good. If you can, find somebody to take you out the field. Sure.